hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel so if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button and turn on your post notifications so that you know every time i post a new video hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel so today i'll be going through the cape caribbean studies ia so it's worth 40 percent of your overall cape grade and there are a few requirements that you need to adhere to first and foremost your theme must be taken from module 3 and those themes are outlined on pages 24 to 28 in your syllabus I'll leave a link to your syllabus down in the description so themes that are acceptable would include the environment the mass media gender issues in the Caribbean the productive sex and development health crime in the Caribbean sports the workplace languages in the caribbean religion literary performing theater and visual arts education music caribbean festivals technology and globalization and the most common migration and diaspora so now that we've gotten to this as I said, it's worth the six. Your paper will be marked out of 60, which is weighted as 120 marks by CXC. Thus, that means it will be the overall paper will be 40% of your overall CXC grade, not counting your paper ones and your paper twos. I'll talk about the length of the paper a little bit later, but the your word limit doesn't include your quotations, your graphs, your charts, your appendices, and your reference or bibliography as per authenticity your paper must be authentic to you that means no plagiarism allowed as per the format of your research project it has a limit of 2000 to 2500 words you must have a, a cover page acknowledgement a table of contents right and your contents because you can have the table of contents and not have any content I also want you to pay attention to the mark scheme right so the mark scheme will help you to know where you need to put most of your effort and focus into so just a quick run through of that your introduction is worth only five marks right and in your introduction that's where you'll state the purpose of your research the state the problem statement as well as the value of your research and technical terms your literature review that's where you'll talk about other research done sim on topics similar to yours and that's worth eight marks also your data collection sources your presentation of data and analysis of data is worth eight marks your analysis of data is 10 marks discussion of findings is 12 marks and your conclusion limitations and recommendations that's eight marks your overall presentation and writing yes you are getting graded on your grammar so how you you talk about your, your topic as well as how you present your words that is very important you get five marks for that so your grammar has to be on point okay so now that we've have that covered what you want to do is open your word document and let's work on the cover page ensure that your font is set to times new roman size 12. i went to page layout where i changed my line spacing to single line spacing but this is based on preference i changed my margins as well to 0 0.5 on the left and 0 0.5 on the right and i left both the top and the bottom at one after I did that, I went ahead to include a header where I placed my topic. Now you'll realize that while I'm adding my header, I will have it in lowercase letters, right? This is so that if there were any spelling errors, my computer would have picked it up so that, you know, when I actually change it to uppercase, there wouldn't be any spelling errors because Lord knows. I have trouble with spelling so after I had put it in I guess I chose a topic on education so I think my topic was an investigation into the effectiveness of online education or the online education system on students attending secondary schools in Kingston Jamaica I sent her aligned my text and 
turn the thing to uppercase. I then skipped a few lines on my page and tried to make it centered. And that's where I entered my name. My name is Camille by the way. After I entered my name, I skipped a space or two spaces rather and left a space and put some school, my school. Seeing that I'm not attending any high school right now, let's just put Young Genius Ac Learning Academy. That's, that has a ring to it. I like it. After I had put my center number and your center number is the first six digits of your candidate number. After I placed my candidate number below and your candidate number is your center number with four additional digits. <laughs> After completing that, you want to skip a few spaces. I just copied and pasted my topic from the header right there. And I skipped a space and in between there, I had inserted the year in which I'm doing my examination. I then highlighted everything and placed it in uppercase. Let's us. After doing that, I just hit Ctrl P just to get a little print preview to see, you know, if my thing was aligned on my page vertically in the center. It wasn't so I skipped a few spaces and I hit Ctrl P again until I was quite happy with what I was seeing. And you should be done with your cover page once you've done that. You'd include your acknowledgement, your table of contents, then your acknowledgement. And then we'll move on to the introduction. Once you've gotten to a new page, what you want to do is center align your text. I placed chapter one at the top. Then I skipped a line and inserted introduction and purpose of research. After I pressed enter and left aligned my text. Then I said that I would put my problem statement there. And please note that it is perfectly fine to restate your topic as your problem statement. However, it is also very much okay if you just elaborated a bit but please remember your word count. So I just inserted an investigation into the effectiveness of the online education system on students attending secondary schools in Kingston, Jamaica. And I was completely finished with my problem statement. After completing my problem statement, I went on to complete my research questions. Your research questions are a list of four questions or four to five questions in which you want your research to be mainly focused on. So if you see my communication studies IA video, you'd know what I'm talking about. I had actually spoken about three focus questions. However, for this, you need four questions. I believe my four questions were what are the negative impacts of the online education system on the academic progress of students? What are the benefits of the online education system on the academic progress of students? And how has online learning affected a student's mental well-being or mentally? And how can the online education system be made more or most effective for students at the secondary level? After completing that, I went on to the purpose of my study. Now, the purpose of your study is literally why you're doing the why you're doing the present why are you doing the research, brother? Like why are you doing it? Why? Just tell me why you're doing it, and we all cool for this purpose of your study then the value of your research will speak to who you want to inform and how this will help so you want to inform the reader of all the benefits of reading your paper so basically who will this help if they read it so examples of people who this would help or persons are the members of the school board the, the minister of education parents policyholders and stakeholders Below you can see a sample of the the SBA in the description. Then you'd want to move on to your technical terms. Your technical terms are basically words that you'll be using frequently throughout your paper. So you just list the words and a definition from a reliable source. So you can get them from encyclopedias, the Collins dictionary or whatever dictionary you want as long as the source is credible you will be fine 
I would also encourage keeping a list or a separate document with the links to the different sites and resources that you've used. So when it comes down to doing your bibliography, it is quite easy. Now your literature review. For this aspect of your research paper, you want to have an introductory paragraph, three different paragraphs, each dedicated to one of your research questions and a conclusion. Now you don't want to write, have four different paragraphs dedicated to all four research questions because you just don't have the word space for that. Trust me. So just talking about three is quite okay and it will suffice so your literature review is where you'll find information given by other researchers on similar topics based on your research questions so introductory paragraph and here my introductory paragraph is shown here where i actually started out by <laughs> just defining what online education was as i said i did my research on online education i said that online education is the acquisition of instructions via the internet more acknowledged to be pedagogical rather than self-selected and i cited my work because hey i didn't get that out of my head you know so i wrote about who i got that information from and that's called an in-text citation so in 2019 some random man named friedman said that or defined online education as such so you'd write the date and separate the dates and the person's surname or last name by a full stop once i was done with that i continued to say since 2020 the majority of the student population has started engaging in online learning due to the introduction of the novel coronavirus the traditional brick and mortar classroom is being utilized yes freak less frequently due to this fact here is where i stated my thesis statement many researchers have sought to discover where or whether online education is the best way to go about student learning in such an era and that's what my entire research paper is based on in the second paragraph i began to elaborate that studies based on observations of students in georgia by and here i'm going to talk about someone else's work so i cited it right and these are i was lucky enough to find a lot of 2020 um sources who spoke about things that were happening in my research area and i can't stress this enough citations are important so please don't forget to cite your work now before moving on to the analysis of data let's talk a bit about the questionnaire so for those who don't know how to make a questionnaire I suggest you open your browser right now and follow ahead and go to Google Forms. You want to include a form title and it's just something short, I guess. So I just said the effectiveness of online education, right? Or the online education system. Then I put a dash and said CAPE 2021 Caribbean Studies SBA. I wanted those who I was sending the the form to to know exactly why I'm doing this so that I would have gotten good responses. All right. I just changed the color because hey, uh, I like blue. I think that's established already. Then in the description part, I just included a little note that will give them a bit of insight on what I am doing and why I need them to do it. So I said good day, my name is and you know Camille Smith, right? That's my name, but you put your name. <laughs> I have opted to carry out a research in the investigation of the inv effectiveness of the online education system on students attending secondary schools in Kingston, Jamaica, to submit as a impartial fulfillment of my Cape Caribbean Studies final grade. That would have sufficed and i said please answer these items to the best of your ability and after i just stated a little disclaimer telling them that hey whatever information you put on this your identity will always be um confidential i even i won't know who answered my forms so 
that also encourage honest answers and actually more people to do it now let's talk about adding some questions to make this a bit easier for you you can include two questions relating to each of your quest, um, research questions and two to three miscellaneous questions by miscellaneous questions i mean like please enter your your gender or what is your age those are miscellaneous questions and a miscellaneous question for me that would have been relevant to my research was do you live or reside in an urban area or rural area and i just entered that and i kept it as a multiple choice question we're going to talk about the different types of questions that you can or yeah types of questions that you can include on your ia questionnaire so there are check boxes an appropriate checkbox question would be what do you use or what devices do you use to attend online classes and here you could enter smartphones or a smartphone laptop tablets or whatever other device you think would be necessary you can even give the person the option of adding another device by clicking add other all right so they can actually select all and whatever and even add another one there are also linear scale questions that include strongly agree or strongly disagree all right so do you a question that would be appropriate for this is i i believe that all students are given equal opportunities to an education or a quality education and you could put strongly agree strongly disagree and you would be fine another type of question is the open-ended question where you can give them whatever leeway you want to actually answer the questions i wouldn't suggest putting this as a required question because not many people like to write and some people just not do the <laughs> not do the questionnaire which is something you actually need them to do for you i toggled a bit with the settings because i like to play around with stuff but that ain't important go to preview and the link highlighted at the top is what you want to share for people to actually do your do your questionnaire i had selected print and i saved it as a pdf then i changed actually converted the pdf to images i'll leave a link to this website here that i used and i'll show you why that's relevant in a bit seeing that i got a two-page document i had to i got it as a zip file so I had, I had to unzip it once i had unzipped it i went back to my word document that i was working on and please let control s be your best friend i went to save um shapes rather and i inserted a drawing canvas that's like at the bottom just look you'll find it trust me i copied and pasted it on another page because hey i got two pages i insert went to fill options and i inserted my fill as a picture and placed it on my document after i did that to the second page as well and once i was done with that i was ready to go on to the analysis of my data so this section would be chapter three of your sba and it's the presentation and analysis of data now once you've got that done pat you want to start off with the data collection sources which would you just speak about what you use to collect your data whether that may be questionnaires interviews surveys focus groups observation or photo voice whatever it may be so i just included that hey it's a mixed method approach that i had used which is also called a mixed methodology whenever you're doing normal research papers where i actually use both primary and secondary sources of data since i had said that i just separated my primary sources of data versus my secondary sources of data no i just spoke a bit briefly on that and then i went on to the presentation of my data and that's where you'll include your charts your graphs and whatnot that's the fun part as i said though all of these that you're not seeing on the screen right now of course these are just pointers but the actual examples are in the description down below so go check it out and share it with your friends 
whenever you're presenting your data though what you want to do is include different types of charts for each different focus question and just talk about the four most relevant focus um focus questions or research questions that you talked about from your from your questionnaire after doing that you want to actually include an introductory introductory statement like the following data is a representation of the information obtained from my questionnaire then you want to include your charts and your graph let me just do an example it was a bar chart i believe i did a couple editing i removed the series part because that wasn't important and i just needed rural and urban so i deleted the columns and i just found out way too late that hey i needed to actually draw the blue lines in so that the graph only looks like a two two pillar graph bar chart after i figured that out i actually closed it and started to add the title of my bar chart so i said that the title was the bar chart showing the number of respondents who resided in herbal urban and rural areas so that is important you, you do need a title and you also need an axis title so on the major y axis <laughs> per se i wrote number of respondents i deleted participants from the bottom because i don't need a key because a it's quite self-explanatory i had a bit of trouble changing the colors but i actually got to it eventually i was a bit annoyed not gonna lie but after doing that i added the numbers or yeah the numbers for each so i had 144 rural participants while i had 81 urban participants and i added the x-axis title and i was good to go under that i had in bold put figure one and full stop shows that the majority of the respondents reside in rural areas those this is represented sorry by the 144 respondents or participants while only 81 participants resided in urban areas and that was sufficient you can just ignore the blue line because you can't capitalize right there after that let me tell you a bit about the acceptable graphing or or graphic or diagrammatic representations you can use pie charts tables line graphs bar charts as i was just shown you and let's say you don't have any you did an interview you can also represent your data through quotations and you know a little explanation let's say you had an interview question that asked how can the online education system be made better or more effective you can include the quotation i believe that <laughs> or i believe through the use of more interactive teaching methods online education can be made more effective and that would be the quotation below that quotation you want a brief explanation of what happened so it was like a based on the interview i conducted or based on the interview conducted please don't make it personal so don't use i and those words with a teacher of physics at the secondary school at a secondary school in kingston jamaica the participant stated that through you know what i said through making using more interactive teaching methods and such and having students have the necessary resources needed then the online education system can be made more effective and that was okay then let's talk about the analysis of data this is basically where you summarize the diagrammatic representations that you have above that's all you'll need to do for your analysis of data for the discussion of your findings you will speak about how or what effect has this had on you and i don't mean you per se but what have you discovered based on what you have in your findings and whenever you're done with that you want to talk about your conclusion your limitations and your recommendations as i said examples will be down in the description below in a document so just go check that out 
for the conclusion you want to answer the purpose of your research if you do science you know that the conclusion is the answer to your aim you want to list four challenges that you have faced while doing your research and that would be your limitation and for your recommendation you want to talk about what you'd suggest doing to make it better then you're done the final piece of your project should include your bibliography your appendices and your table of contents and acknowledgement and your complete paper is fantastically done